And it's uh, very rare, if not, if I don't think it's ever happened, where I don't get through the week with some stupid mistake. And uh, to, this week's stupid mistake was that I didn't even realize today was the solemnity of St. John the Baptist. And I was so proud of myself because I started to prepare the homily for this one last Sunday. So I thought, well, I'll open up and look what's on the 12th Sunday of the year. And then yesterday when I came to look at the newsletter, I realized I prepared a homily for the wrong readings. So you know what I did? I got very creative and I just said, well, we're not going to have the readings of St. John the Baptist. We're going to have the ones for Sunday. So for those of you who've been preparing for Mass all week with these readings for St. John the Baptist, I am sorry. I hope you'll forgive me because uh, so, I've done the readings for Sunday. So, but I want to move on uh, from uh, a bearded hermit in the desert, John the Baptist, and talk about a mustachioed Italian plumber. How many Italian plumbers with moustaches can you think of? Anyone? Anyone play video games? Can you want to say it? Super Mario. Yeah, super, do we all know who Super Mario is? Yeah, because if we don't... Yeah, yeah, see, I knew you would. Okay. So I grew up playing Super Mario Brothers and Mario Kart. Mario runs around, doesn't he? Every time he jumps, he goes boing. And every time his head hits something, he goes ping, because he's got a coin or something like that. And bizarrely, when I was looking at the readings for this week's Mass, I had a dream about Super Mario. And in fact, in my dream, I was Super Mario. I know, I know. So, um, so I had my little red hat on and my moustache and, hey, Luigi, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and I was having a great time jumping around and hitting my head on things until I saw a vast lake of very deep and dark water. Now, in the Mario Brothers games, if you've ever played them, water always kills Mario. Okay, he's trying to jump over you know, hills or something, hits the water, and he's, ah, I'm dead. But I like water. So in the dream, I see this vast dark lake, and I think, I'm going to jump in that. So I run along and boing, jump out into the water, and because I'm Super Mario, I start to drown. I slip out of consciousness, I'm like, oh, help me, help me, help me. But luckily for me, in my dream, there's also Princess Peach. Does anyone know who Princess Peach is? Yeah, of course you do, of course you do. So, now in Super Mario games, Princess Peach is always the princess that Mario has to rescue. So wherever, wherever Princess Peach is, Mario's on the way to come and get her. Her sole function in the game is to be rescued. But in my dream, the roles are reversed. Because I'm drowning, so I've been stupid, and Princess Peach, who can swim, apparently, jumps in the water to save me. So she dives down deep into the water and pushes me up to the surface so that I can breathe again. And do you know what? It was actually a very biblical dream. Because in the Bible, Old and New Testament, the woman is represented as wisdom. Wherever you see wisdom exercised in the Bible, it's a lady. Lady wisdom comes to save foolish mankind. And that's what she did for me in the Bible, or in my dream. Now, you might be thinking, how is this related to today's reading? Well, think about it. All of the readings today are about the dangers of water. Here in the first reading in Job, you definitely hear about it when Jesus calms the storm. And we might be thinking, well, water is dangerous, but it's also life-giving. You know, we need water to survive. Most of our planet is composed of water. If we didn't have water, we would die. But for the ancient Hebrews and for the people of Jesus' time, water meant death. Water meant chaos and despair. Because you couldn't build a house on water. You couldn't raise your family on water. You couldn't grow your crops in the sea. So wherever there was the sea, that represented death, chaos, and disorder. Now imagine this first reading. It's from the book of Job. And most of us know the story of Job, don't we? He had it all. He had built his life on the land. Everything was going very well for him. He had family, he had prosperity. And then in one swoop, God takes it all away. Now imagine what that must have felt like for him. He would have been literally drowning, dying inside as well as dying outside. His life was plunged into chaos. There was nothing he could hold on to. It was all gone. He was pure despair. And it's in that moment that God speaks to him. He says, am I not the one who keeps the waters of the sea at bay, who controls the tides and seasons so that they may never swamp you? 
And through that long story of Job, he struggles. He tries to understand the ways of God, how this could have happened to him. And at the end of it, he doesn't get his family back. He gets a new family, but he doesn't get the ones he's lost back. The wounds that have been inflicted on his life, they're still there. But he has a renewed understanding of God. The God who, no matter how bad things get for us, will help us to navigate the waters of life, will teach us to swim, even in the depths of despair, when all those bad choices, all those bad things that have happened to us come to swamp us over. And that helps us to make sense of what Jesus is trying to teach his apostles in the gospel today. You see, Jesus is with his disciples in the boat, and what happens? The storm starts to rage, and they become fearful, as we all do, when uncertainty, when brokenness, when the truth of our life starts to creep in on us, when things become even a little bit uncertain, when relationships break down. You know when that bill comes in the post and you haven't got enough money in the account? That's what the storm is, right? Okay, it starts to break in on us. And what do they do? They say, Jesus, can't you see we're going down? They wake Jesus up and Jesus says something to them which I've always found a bit curious. He says, well, he calms the storm, so he sorts it out. But then he says, where was your faith? Where was your faith? And I always thought to myself, that's a funny question to ask because surely to call on Jesus in the time of trouble is exactly what he wants us to do. So why is he criticizing the apostles? Well, I think it's this. If we look at the context and we look at the circumstances of where it happened, where were the apostles? They were in the boat with Jesus. They were already safe. They were the ones who were above the waters, navigating their way through the stormy waters. I think what he was trying to tell them was, when you're with me, you don't need to worry about the storms around you. Rather, you have to swim through them. With me on your side, you don't need me to calm the waters down. In fact, you have another mission. Because if we are on the boat of Jesus, now bear in mind that a boat has always been a really ancient symbol of the church, then our duty isn't to try to calm the waters for ourselves or make everything just perfect, because that's never going to happen. But we are called to pull other people aboard. So when Jesus says, where is your faith? In other words, he's saying, why aren't you doing your job? As members of my family, empowered by my spirit, your role is to bring others on board. Now, it's to be noted, sometimes we miss it a lot in that reading. What does it say when they went from the shore? Jesus went in one boat and he was joined by many others. That's mission territory. Now, last week I began to speak. Remember I came back from Canada and I was deliriously tired. And we talked about invitation and about developing a culture of invitation in our church. Invitation is the way we draw other people to Jesus. It's how we ourselves come closer to Jesus. You see, as I said last week, it's easy to think of evangelization, spreading the good news of Jesus, something which is above our pay grade, something we can't do. I can't stand on a street corner and tell everyone about Jesus with the Bible in my hand. I can't introduce to Jesus to people personally. Well, the good news is you don't have to do that. It's much, much more simple. You see, many of us are still trying to, we've just got our head above the water of life, haven't we? We're just literally, we're just swimming. But we do have that capacity because Jesus is with us. And if we've got that capacity just to get our head above water, then we're doing very well. God is with us. And if we are breathing the air, then that means we are called to pull other people with us, to be their boat. And the way we do that, we reach out a hand. We invite we help people to see the air that we're breathing by the way that we breathe, by the smile on our face, by our attitude towards them. Will you come with me to church on Sunday? Try it out. Maybe you get one in ten. Why don't you try Alpha with me? Why don't you come to praise and worship with me? Just, just give it a go. They'll say no ten times, but they may say yes the eleventh. And that eleventh time may be the time that they began to float back to the surface. Because we don't know what people are going through. We know what a lot of people are going through, our friends and close family. But until it's brought to Jesus, we 
can do nothing for them. Because it's like saying, well, it's like me, a doggy paddler, trying to teach someone to become an Olympic swimmer. You know? Ain't going to happen. Jesus is the champ, okay? And if I can doggy paddle, I can drag them to him, okay? And then it's his job to turn them into the Olympic swimmer, the great saint that we're all called to be. Our role as passengers on this boat which sways through life is to pull other people on board by extending the hand of invitation. So let's take up that challenge. We don't know how blessed we are to be here right now. Because if you're here right now, in some way, shape or form, according to your own circumstances and the difficulties in your life, you have a relationship with Jesus. And that relationship with Jesus is salvation. Because that relationship with Jesus keeps our head above the chaos of life, doesn't take it away because that's life, but it does assure us that we are swimming to the shores of heaven, of true life. And our calling as Christians, as Jesus commands his apostles, is to take people along with us by means of the invitation that we can extend. Amen.